Bartons and bars getting beer. It's the Sevilles. How you doing, guys? We're good. Thanks doing for great. having us. Uh, thanks for being on the show. I'm Megan from the Sevilles. We have Nate, drums. I'm Gabriel. I play bass guitar. I'm Sylvain playing guitar. Straight up front Straight person. Straight vocals, jumping around, dancing. Yes. Running out of breath. And uh, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of that on June 22nd. June 22nd, Lee's Palace. Lee's Palace. June 22nd. Friday Monster night. Some kind of event coming up. <laughs> no, no, not much. We're playing with uh, Waves That Stray, their local. Uh, they have some really cool stuff. I'm looking forward to playing with them. And uh, Averages, who are from London, we've uh, played a couple of shows with them in the past. And they are a blast. They're touring uh, the East Coast right now. So they're coming back just to play with us. Let's talk about your latest release. When, was, when did that come out? March 30th. March 30th, okay, and that's called? Something Strange is the album. <laughs> so Something Strange. Um, when I wrote Something Strange, it was a take on modern day relationships. So you're getting up, you're excited for the night, you put, you're getting ready, you're drinking your red wine, as I said in the song, and you have high hopes. You go out to the bar, you go out to the club, there's bright lights everywhere, and you're excited, and you think you're going to meet that person. And, of course, you don't. <laughs> and you're let down for the... <laughs> every, every weekend you go out and you're continuously let down. And in the chorus I say, how do you do the things that make me want you? over and over and you're just stuck in this continuous cycle and that is a modern day relationship. You hook up, you go on Tinder and you meet the person but it's not the person of your dreams and that's it. <laughs> so I just wanted to write about that. <laughs> the motivation everything. Meg and I had time working through some stuff and uh, so that kind of kicked into gear he was everything we needed and more. yeah and more <laughs> oh and more yeah right yeah, yeah. Obviously. and we had tons of help uh, we ended up working with a, uh, a wonderful sound engineer named Ross Citrullo who uh, works through Ilds Gel Collection it's a hard word to say I know he was fantastic. He's got a wonderful ear for things, and we had we had this this massive net full of everything everyone wanted, and we had no idea how to harness it. So he kind of uh, he bottlenecked us into the right direction, and um, then uh, once the music was recorded, we had our our uh, good friend Danny Danny Dunlop piece it together into uh, telling the story with the music videos. Nice. So. The first one was Something Strange, the actual title track from the album. And we let that one kind of go a soft launch. We didn't want to just throw it in everyone's faces. We wanted to kind of flow its own path. And uh, Sunday morning, we used uh, a bit more of a marketing scheme, a bit more promo, to really get the music out there and let people know we're all about. Let's go more into the, the individual songs and what you're writing about and what parts of your life are coming out on in your music, in your lyrics. So what are you writing about? <laughs> what am I writing about, Nate? <laughs> is, it, is it the drama? This drama. Are you guys... <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, There's an exclusive. Yeah. The way that I write music is I'll come up with a catchy melody and... So we had a lot of melodies, and we were in the studio trying to collectively piece them together. We received a grant, and thank God for that grant, we were able to put all our ideas into an album and release it, and something strange was made. And I'm glad we got our love out, finally. That's great. We're in a collective mix. Yeah. We have a lot of different generations and a lot of different playing styles. Do you mind if I ask that same question to this side of the table? For sure. Yeah. We're, we're pretty influenced by, you know, um, catchy music, pop music, yeah. modern music. Um, 
we're influenced by some show. Like we have a lot of showmanship in our act. Like if somebody's just watching this, they don't know our you know our live performance. We we suit up. <laughs> we suit I up a little suit. bit. I noticed the good colors. Yeah, we got a couple of colors on the stage. We got a couple of colors. Loud colors. So the three of us are in uh, you know very loud suits while we perform. Tie and all, purple and blue and Mr. Pink. And uh, so that's you know that was kind of influenced by showmanship of you know glam rock and kind of like you know all the pop music guys that always had a, had a visual aspect to the music. And Meg is kind of always meant to stand out amongst three guys in suits playing music. You know, she's always like are you guys front woman. And, sorry, no, 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 go ahead. No, she's always been like the idea is always to have a backdrop almost for Meg. Yeah, but a visual backdrop, and we chose the suits based on the energetic backdrop. Yeah, yeah. We chose the suits based on the album uh, artwork, so we're trying to kind of tie it all together. Yeah, yeah. But you guys haven't always been driven by the kitschy stuff. You said metal earlier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, Your solos are pretty metal. I actually, yeah, I, I <laughs> they are. You shredded. Are. You, you shred. <laughs> so it's pop like, with a shred. Right. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, when I first started the guitar, I started with uh, playing guitar with my friend, who was two years older than me, and he just started uh, high school, and that's where he started playing guitar. And when I saw him play, I was like, oh my god, that's so cool, right? And then eventually he started playing like uh, Metallica solo and songs, like, and I was like, oh my god, that's it, that's it. So once I got into high school, I started playing guitar. But the only music I was listening is because of But uh, last little bit, I've been playing uh, Mayor Brothers. I've got a, a sponsor from California. He's fantastic. He's uh, a woodworker who just loves his craft. I work. I do a bunch of woodworking on the side, too. I freaking love the guy. He's fantastic. I have a custom drum set that is the thing of my dreams. Jack Mayer. Uh, Jack Mayer. Uh, High-end custom stuff for Krabby Auto. And then this uh, Mayer Brothers was a side project. I was lucky enough that he wanted to start representing me. His gear is unbelievable. Like, absolutely stellar. Uh, he set me up. I, I play a very simple kit. Kick, rack tom, tom, sit, snare. Very, very simple. 26. 26 inches. I like to do this again. I learned with uh, Bonham. He had a killer sound back then. And if you look at anything nowadays, the massive kick drum. And if you look at anything nowadays, guys might play smaller drums. It is a bitch to take to shows. But when it comes to recordings, anything that is recorded now... All the big stuff, they take samples of the old stuff and layer it on top. The second release of the album was uh, Sunday Morning. It was, the the story around the music video turned out to be more interesting than the background on the song itself. So the, the song's written, it's, it's early love, it's silliness and hormones and stupidity and fun and the full zest of what life is all about. Um, but while we were recording that downtown, our van that we uh, used for everything got robbed. And it was full of all of our, uh, our director's gear, all of his film gear. Um, back glass was smashed, the van was damaged, the gear was taken. And uh, luckily, the kid, I love him to death, Danny Dunlop does all of our filming. He's some sort of creative genius. I've known him for years and years and years. He's one of the most interesting souls you ever meet. And the second it happened, I wasn't sad because I knew he would get it back. I knew he would find it. And he did. And he currently still maintains his old gear that was stolen from him. And uh, you'll never find that in any other circumstance. But, um, you know, we were really happy with how the video turned out. Um, it was, it was, we tried to mix things up a little bit. The first, uh, the uh, video for Something Strange was very band oriented, performance oriented, high energy, excitement, lights, confetti, balloons, madness. And uh, some uh, Sunday morning, we wanted to get something more developed in terms of a plot and a storyline. So, um, you've got the young couple, the uh, the actors who worked with us were fantastic, they were a true to life couple, and uh. Their, their on-screen chemistry was a blast. From the first shot he took, I was, I was blown away. So to see these kids in the first five seconds of filming absolutely nail a take, we were just blown away. It was awesome to see. 
So, uh, Nate and V, thank you so much for your contribution. You guys were fantastic. Uh, and I hope this helps you guys as much as this helped us. So, thank you. We <laughs> began with dinosaurs. Yeah, so we, uh, we put the first two videos out. Had a lot of fun doing it. Um, and then we decided to keep going. So we started a third video. And the third video, we fully gave to Danny to um, just run with it. We really gave him full creative freedom. So I don't want to say too much because the video is not released yet. But there's a major plot to it. There's a beginning, middle, and an end. There's some tragedy. There's some laughs. There's some loss. Um, what he did is awesome with the video and uh, is hilarious. And we also had a couple actors that helped out with that one as well. Um, the song is called If You Want My Love. And uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. We went to London, Ontario, not England, uh, for a day and we rented this. Uh, yeah, that would have been cool. Maybe next time. So we rented this factory and. Uh, Which had some bombs in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had these, I guess it used to be like a, yeah. some bomb. This factory slash warehouse slash like old retail store it used to be like a military depot sales center or something like that. So there were like, used to be store. yeah, all kinds of weird things in there. Anyway, so we rented the place for the day. We did a photo shoot, filmed the video, went into the night. We had a blast. It was so much fun. And uh, yeah, the video comes out next Friday. When's the video come out? The video? <laughs> the video comes out coincidentally the same day that we are performing live on television. You're gonna Monday. be on Global? Yeah, we're gonna be on Global. How did I know that? I don't know. It's like, it's like you yeah, heard it somewhere. Yeah, I didn't know that. So someone told me. <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna be on Global, and that's the official launch of the video. So we're all super excited. Wow, that's really great. Monday, June 11th. What song is Morning it? Morning show. Morning show. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you may not have to get up early. Forty in the morning. Okay. And we're doing. Uh, if you want my love. That's awesome. I roll. <laughs> you know what I want to talk about? What? Not only the solo, but all the guitar tracks. Were you, did you do a lot of tracks? There's actually not a lot of tracks. Uh, that song is obviously for us to be as double tracks on each guitar. Left and right, just to create a more bigger spectrum of sound of the guitar. Um, but there isn't a lot of uh, a lease in that song. Uh, it's mostly so the way the way this song was written. I was just jamming at home. I remember I was just like jamming riffs and stuff at Google and just press record and just and I brought all this like <laughs> 10, 15 minutes of random riffs of like a couple seconds, you know, to Nate. And he's like, I like that part there. Why would I always try to do something with one of the that part? So I'm like, okay, let's 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 try this. And then we we went downstairs and jammed with the thing. And that song didn't really sound as rock and roll that time. But the way I thought about the writing part, I just wanted to be. You know, nowadays music is more like. With exceptions, of course, but music is more like you got one tonality and go all over again. And especially in pop music, it's mostly like one riff or two, or mm -hmm. you know, that comes all over again. And the singer adds melody and the melody changes, yeah. and stuff like that. but the background is always the same. I was like, that's cool nowadays, but how did like old bands, like 50s, 60s, whatever, got into it without doing this? They, they obviously they did, some, some of those did, but not all of them, like the Beatles. How did those songs came so big, so popular? Right, because like there's a lot of that's kind of music, actually. But like the the, the 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 thing behind it, like the principle of it. So we are a manager. She's legendary, and we love her. Tour operator and merchandiser, even bus driver. Even though she's our manager. official mascot, bus driver. Bus driver. She has very good bus. Translator. She does it all. She does it all. She's trilingual at minimum. There's a, maybe a couple more. We're not sure yet. She might be quadrilingual. Yeah, I speak LSQ, that's for the sign languages for the deaf people in Quebec. French can even. So at least quadrilingual. Now I'm very intimidated. She's been but wonderful. back on them, Seville. Don't miss out on uh, June 22nd. Also our official promoter. So how did you guys start? Do you want to tell us about the inspiration, the motivation? We actually started... We met officially 
Boston Pizza is doing a singing competition. And oh, I, yeah? I invited everybody that I knew. I was on the third round, so I was kind of excited. I didn't really know him. I knew him through mutual friends. He was in a band called The Nursery. I played in the nursery for a couple years. And uh, you were from that, she came out to support. So I was like, she's in a competition. I'll go out and support. Let's see what happens. Nice. So he came out, and from then on, he noticed that I sang, and I knew he played drums. And I'm like, let's do this. Right. We started with open mics. Oh, did you? Nothing fancy. Yeah, was, I was on guitar, which is sad. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's passable at best. You're a good guitar player anyway. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> So, and uh, once we kind of started getting moving on stuff and playing, some people were like, this is really cool. Like, you should do something with this. And I was like, I need to drop the guitar then and focus on what I know. We should find some people. Yeah. <laughs> so Van came first. I moved in in 2016 from Quebec to you. Were you playing in bands? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, uh, I had a couple bands over the years. Uh, but, like, it, it really didn't really okay. have to it, but... Still, we're yeah, making yeah, fun yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the blast and stuff like that. With people. I used to play in a lot of metal bands and uh, and in a lot of rock and roll. And you look like you played a lot of metal bands. I think I, I, I tried to. I I, I guess so. But, uh, we met in a metal band. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So when I moved here, I was he looking plays at Ibanez, ads. by the way. He plays Ibanez guitar. Okay. He's got metal hair. I was looking on Facebook for bands and stuff because nowadays that's how we find bands when you don't know many people around. And uh, I found a band uh, that Nate were in, actually, and yep. eventually uh, I joined. So you knew each other, and they knew each other, and then how does Gabriel fit in? I'm the new summer, so this is both the latest edition. And they found me through the uh, power of the internet. <laughs> through uh, Kijiji or Craigslist like or something like that. Like the deepest, darkest hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the deep web. I was crawling around the deep web, yeah. and they found yeah, yeah. me. And it turns out we're like second cousins. Oh yeah, something. we have a lot of weird yeah. connections. Wow. Like our Never parents met know each other, and like our families know each yep. other. Wow. And we just got started going. Oh, you guys go just did the Kijiji thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Just on the Kijiji. That's crazy. Yeah. I think and you messaged me, or I messaged you. I don't know. I messaged you. I was, I was. She was recording. Yeah. I remember because we were, we were doing a couple scratch tracks. Yeah. She was recording. I was just killing time while she was doing takes. Yeah. And I was messaging everybody. I messaged yeah. everybody. I was. We were actually looking for a keyboard player of all three. And I found this guy, he's like, I know how to play everything. I'm pretty awesome at stuff. No big deal. <laughs> Did I say that? No, he's pretty good. <laughs> Some of those guys, he's, 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 good. he's extremely technical. Thank he's you. great. And which is the wonderful asset for me. Apparently I'm the last guy they found on the internet. A fun Checked fact. all these people. <laughs> Finally I found no. this guy. It's yeah. actually fun fact, it's actually the first one who messaged. And he showed up and yeah. we just talked. Yeah, about we went for a beer at Monarch Tavern. That's it. And we like It was cool. Why not try it out? Are cool. yeah. Yeah. It out? Just yeah. worked out. Yeah. <laughs> and then we found out later on, just by chatting, he knew some of like, my cousins. Yeah, so we were cousins or second or third. Or <laughs> my story. My story, <laughs> guys. Guy can, yeah. My story. So guy comes was, all the way from Quebec, and I'm on like, Kijiji, yeah, yeah, and we already knew each other. <laughs> all right. At three sandwiches. months old, my parents abandoned me <laughs> in the Niagara Falls forest. It was raised in a barrel. Of wolves. They later taught me the bass guitar words. <laughs> when I was 13 years old, I started playing guitar. The wolves taught me. <laughs> the wolves taught me. And then uh, they were not they were not very good. The paws didn't really help. Um, <laughs> and then uh, they taught me, this is the true part of the story, they taught me Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd, which is the first song I ever learned on guitar at 13 years old. Loved it. And then uh, I played in high school bands, I played in bands after high school, and now I'm playing in another band. What was your uh, twenty second? Oh, <laughs> you know, we've had massive support from our, uh, our our sound engineer Ross, our label rep Ray, our director Danny. Everyone's been working to make this thing a success and uh, really get our message out there and all the fun stuff we've got going on. We can't do it without anyone else. This isn't just like the four of us working together. This is a, a total community. Maya's been wonderful. They've all been great. I can't thank everybody enough. And I just wanted to let you know, on June 9th, we are performing at a Grilled Cheese Festival oh, yes, Challenge, which is Lakeshore and Islington. We'll be outside performing at noon. So if you want to taste a bunch of grilled cheese with us, <laughs> be my guest. Every singer knows how We're opening for the Dreamboats. We're stellar. On the 9th? 
On the 9th. Totally June 9th, Saturday noon. Be there, grilled cheese grilled challenge. Cheese. I will be eating before and right after the set. It's on Lakeshore and Islington. Oh, right here. Round the block. Should we tell them where we are right now? Right now we're at Southside Johnny's. It's the corner of 36th and Lakeshore. Best wings in the motherfucking city. Oh, yep. I loved watching your mom dance to you before. I used to, um, because I used to, <laughs> when I was in the middle one with Nate, um, I used to play bass. And uh, I was jumping around the state. I love jumping around the state. <laughs> oh, you are the most energetic one. You I, go crazy I, I don't know. I just like, I, I got that from my mom. Because, like, she's really Your mom, energetic. Your mom she also like, jumps around on she, stage. Right? She's 70. <laughs> she has ba Ed Banging with me. Right? She still does. Yeah, it was great. It. Yeah. And I play with a wireless. So, wireless system. So, I uh, was walking around the, the show. Crowd. I just went down oh, down the crowd, and she was right there in the front, and was just like head banging with her. And she just like head banging with her. Like, mom is so That cool. was funny. What's your mom's name? Uh, Christian. Hi, Christian. Uh, <laughs> hello, now, can, hello. Can you do the Christian dance again? It's, <laughs> that's that is cool. it. That is it. That's basically it. Hello, Mama Marquis. Je t'aime. Je t'aime plus. Describe the challenges that a girl has to go through to get heard, first of all, and musically, and then to be a front person and have a major role. When you think back to the 60s and 70s and prior to that, you think of a band. What's the first thing that comes to your, man, to your mind? I would think all male fronted singers, players, you name it. You don't see a female anywhere near the stage. You see them <laughs> fainting on the floor and obsessed with the singers. And you would never picture them on stage until you have the Janet Joplin's. Being on stage, we are constantly judged and people are criticizing. But I think being on that stage, I don't hear anything anymore. It's just me doing what I love and people are more envious of that. They forget what you look like, they forget everything that's surrounded by you, and they actually listen to your voice. And I think that is the best way to get your voice heard, is to do what you love. We're constantly battling for ideas sometimes, and it de my idea might not work. I bring it to the table, it's too dull, it's too boring, it's it's this and that. But sometimes I sit with Sylvain, and we will argue, but we work it out. And we get the product out as much as we're like, ah! <laughs> we're like, yes, we got it. <laughs> we compromise, we work with one, of one another, we're a band. We're a passion. We're teammates. On the album, when you listen to it, I hope you do, <laughs> Serenade comes to mind. Serenade was just me and my guitar plunking around. I may not play that much, but when I do, I draw my emotions on paper and I'm like, look what I have! And I played it for them and right away we had an idea and it just worked. There was no question, it just worked and it was a ballad. It, it's full of feeling and emotion and it was finally when I just took all of that and just did it myself I think that was the most empowering and so the, the you know Janis Joplin's of the world and, and the other amazing women we, we've already talked about Amy and, and some other women do you channel some of that or, or do you have your own thing that you're still trying to nurture? Is it a little of both? Um, I actually was in a fight with my vocal teacher when I was 18 years old. He said, stop sounding like Christina Aguilera! Ah. I'm like, sorry! <laughs> it is so hard to find your individual voice. You're constantly sounding like this song, then the Britney Spears and all these voices and it's so hard to hear your own. One day you just need to sit in front of your microphone, sit in front of the mirror and just do what you feel and that's what I did when I joined with the Sevilles and 
I was able to finally channel my voice and now I hear Maya saying sometimes you have a unique voice like when we play your song it, it's you it's not Britney Spears it's not Christina Aguilera it's yourself and that is the that's the whole point of it all but it's always you so you're, you've mentioned those names obviously. there's Gwen Stefani in there yeah. there's Blondie yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> there's Janice there's Janice and there's Sunrise Amy. Amy's in there Amy's in oh, yeah. there Amy oh, is yeah. in there thank god <laughs> Rest in peace. Christina's in there. They're all in there and they all influenced me along this journey. So 100% we will be touring around Ontario and Quebec in uh, September, September of 2018. We're shooting for some dates in the uh, northeastern part of the United States, going as far as Boston. But we're waiting for some representation from their end of things. We've contacted a couple of bands. We're looking for some cool bands that would uh, suit us. But yeah, we would love to round and we're going to kick some ass. It's the first time we've done something like this. Short of anyone being like, what's your favorite food? What are you? Oh, God. What's your morning routine? Uh, what was your first no, no. concert? Who's wearing underwear? What do you like in your smoothies? <laughs> Mine is blue. <laughs> Why are you no, both mine not? is blue. Yours is purple. <laughs> but mine is blue. Mine is blue. Yours are these the bloomers? Are we so wrong? Mine are nude. <laughs> I'll trade you right now. I'll trade you right now. Oh. It turns out nobody is wearing yeah, I got the purple ones. <laughs> it's I got purple, hot out. Blue. I'll trade you right now. Okay, that's great. I guess I, I just got blue underwear. Give you my underwear. Yeah, yeah probably. Okay. Great question, man. Eh? So I have a song we should work on when we get home. All right. Let's go okay, home. Great. So we should go work on that. We're the Seville's and we're going home. We're not gonna tell you where you might see it, but yeah. Musicians in bars getting beer at the Seville's. Thank you so much. Musicians bye beer. bye. Woo! Thank you. June 11th music video. June 22nd, Lee's Palace. Don't forget it. You got it right now. Friday, June 22nd. <laughs> Merci. Cheers. Of pancakes. Where are we? It's outside Johnny's 3D House of Pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's 40. It's outside John Johnny's 40 House.